Hey, what's up guys? I uh, want to do a quick video talking about the differences between the WBC's Clean Boxing Program, or CBP, and true VADA testing for a fight. Now, the WBC Clean Boxing Program, which I'll call CBP in this video for short, is administered through VADA. VADA conducts the, well, they collect the samples and then they, uh, the whole process of, of getting the lab work done and reporting the results. VADA does do that, but it is different than a fighter signing up for VADA testing for a particular fight. Very, very different in terms of budget, cost, and scope. So I wanted to bear with me here, my, uh, my crude notes here. We're gonna do clean boxing program by the numbers. I'm gonna write down some stuff here. I wanted to put some numbers down just to show you guys the scope of this thing, okay? So real quick, CBP is essentially WBC's testing program that says all top 15 rated fighters in each division have to be enrolled or they lose their rating and you are subject to random testing at any point through a calendar year, again, if you're rated in the top 15. So real quick numbers wise, um, that's 17 divisions, 15 fighters, that is 255 fighters a month are enrolled in the WBC's clean boxing program. Now, before I get into more details, I do want to stop and state that I like the idea of CBP. I think it's a good idea and I applaud the WBC for being the only sanctioning organization that is not only uh, stepping up in creating and already has created and implemented a testing program, but they're putting their money where their mouth is because the WBC pays for this. Now, the money that the WBC gets comes from the fighters paying sanctioning dues and everything else. So ultimately it's the fighters that are paying for this, but the WBC is putting their money where their mouth is, so to speak, more than any other group. So they do deserve credit. But th there are big issues with the program, primarily funding. Before we get into funding with the clean boxing program and how the lack of funding that's there, you guys need to understand how much it costs to perform a simple drug test, okay? So a lot of you guys focus on the actual lab work and the test being processed. What you don't think about are the collection of the sample and then getting that sample to the lab. There's a cost associated with that and it's a lot more than you would think. So uh, I've asked around to, to a couple of testing organizations, not just VADA, but a couple of them, generally speaking, how much it costs just to collect a sample. And it can range anywhere from um, about $600 to $1,200, depending. Now, keep in mind, and these are things that maybe you just aren't always thinking about, collecting a urine sample is much easier than collecting a blood sample. Or in the case of um, Canelo Alvarez with a clenbuterol scandal, a hair follicle sample. All those are different, but at least with VADA, all sample collection has to be done by, by somebody who is an official, somebody that is uh, certified, accredited. They don't just send anybody to go pick up a sample and they don't just leave it up to a fighter to pee in a cup and send it in the mail. They send somebody to the training site, wherever it may be, to collect a sample. And again, collecting a urine sample, well, that's pretty easy. Blood sample, that's a medical procedure. That involves needles, right? So that's obviously going to be more expensive. It's more detailed. Collecting the sample is one thing, but you guys gotta remember, traveling to a training site to collect a sample, not always that easy. It's not like, look, for example, uh, Maurice Hooker and Errol Spence fight and train out of, out of Dallas, right? So somebody you know, to travel from Vegas to Dallas to collect a sample and get that to the lab, not that much cost associated, but what if you have a fighter in Kazakhstan? What if you have a fighter in Thailand or Nicaragua or Australia or Russia? That gets much more difficult. So just traveling to collect the sample, and, and you should know there are officials, certified officials throughout the world that work with accredited labs that can go collect a sample. So out, not everyone's flying from the United States over to Kazakhstan. There are people in different parts of the world but still, you can imagine some of these more remote locations, it's much harder to collect a sample. So just getting that sample, there's a, a cost associated with that. And then there's what they call a chain of custody. 
along the sample's travel journey from where it's collected to the actual lab. VADA ensures, they go to great lengths to ensure that there is a verified, certified chain of custody for that sample from the second it's collected to the second it arrives at the lab. That costs money. You can't just simply run up to the post office and throw the sample in the mail and say, hey, you guys should get this in a week. No, it's, it's much more complicated than that, especially if you're coming from one of these more remote lo locations, like I mentioned a second ago. Uh, also, something you guys should know, and I think that there's a lot of misconception about this. From the second the sample is collected, there's a number associated with the sample, not a name. No fighter name is put there. It's a, it's a number. And through the entire chain of custody, all the way to the lab, and even during processing in the lab, nobody knows which fighter that sample was taken from. There's just a number associated. And the only time that the number is matched up with the fighter name again, from the point it was collected, the sample, is when the test results are in. And it's either everything's fine or there's something abnormal that was found. That is when a number is matched to a name and the results are reported. So you hear a lot of rumors that somebody along the way may have known that this sample belonged to this fighter or that sample belonged to that fighter. That's not how it works. It's simply a number that's on the sample all the way through the process. But again, that costs money. So you're talking anywhere from $600 to $1,200 or more to collect that sample, travel, collect the sample, and send it to the lab. Then there's the lab costs. And that could go anywhere from a few hundred dollars, depending on what you're testing, upwards to almost $2,000 if you're testing blood, you're doing the CIR test, that's the carbon isotope ratio test, that's the best test available for, uh, for blood work. Um, so again, it depends what you're testing, but generally speaking, on average, a, a solid test performed, uh, collected and, and, and reviewed, uh, you're talking $1,000 to $3,000 possibly, depending on the sample, where it's collected, what have you. So look, for the purposes of this video, we'll stick with $1,000 as the average cost associated with doing a test, but it's actually much higher than that. It's actually probably closer to 2,000, but again, just for, for uh, easy numbers, easy math, we'll use 1,000. Knowing, keeping in the back of our mind that that's a low estimate. $1,000, okay, so keep that in the back of your mind. Anyway, I talked before about the 255 fighters in clean boxing program, right? Every month. Now, what's the budget? The WBC gives VADA $10,000 every month. How many tests can you perform based upon the math we just did with that $10,000? Well, again, we're rounding really low we're being really, really, really fair here. It's actually much more than this, but at best, per the math, per the budget, you're getting 10 tests a month. 10 tests a month. 10 tests a month for 255 fighters. 255 fighters in the program, you're really getting closer to five or six tests, if that, a month. All right, so think about that. What does that mean? That means over 95% of the fighters in the clean boxing program are not being tested. That's through no fault of VADA or even the WBC. That's just all the money that's available. And again, the way this works is the WBC hands VADA a list of all the rated fighters, the fighters that are enrolled in the program via their ratings in the BC and $10,000 approximately and says, test who you want. Now, VADA will try to look at, okay, who has a fight coming up, and that's who they'll try to test. They'll, they'll, they'll try to put some logic behind who they test and how they test. And with Clean Boxing Program, they're gonna use, uh, they're gonna do urine testing a lot more than blood testing. Blood testing is, a, is rare in CBP because it's so expensive. So to get more bang for their buck, they do urine testing more than anything else. And it's much easier if you're an athlete who is doping with the intent to cheat, doing it knowingly and cycling down and stacking and doing all that kind of stuff and understanding the way half-lifing works and how to dilute your urine. It's way easier to cheat on a urine test than it is for a blood test. All right, so 10 tests per month 
Obviously, if we do the math there, that's about 120 tests a year. And again, we're being generous. About 120 tests a year through the clean boxing program. Now, I talked about 255 fighters each month being in the program. Well, you got to think over a calendar year, ratings fluctuate, particularly the, the bottom half of that top 15 in each division, right? So in a calendar year, you're talking well over 300 fighters at some point or another are going to be enrolled in the clean boxing program. It's also the World Boxing Council, meaning there are fighters in hundreds of countries all over the world who are represented in their ratings. So if you're VADA, again, I talk about sample collection, it's hard to get to some of these locations and test some of these fighters uh, who live and train in some of these you know, far corners of the earth versus testing a guy who's in the United States or the UK, something like that. All right, so let's put some more numbers on this. 255 fighters, maybe 10 are being tested in a month. And again, that's being very, very um, liberal. It's probably f about five or so. To really do true year-round Olympic-style drug testing, fighters need to be tested two, three times a week because you guys know as well as I do, there are certain drugs that you, a fighter, an athlete, may ingest just to give them a little, little extra pep, a little extra energy that day at the gym or maybe if they're sparring or maybe even the night of the fight. There are certain drugs that burn out of your system within 24 to 48 hours that are only meant to give your system a quick jolt that are on the banned prohibited list that WADA puts out, that VADA and USADA and everyone else has to follow. So even if you are tested once a week, that's not good enough. It actually needs to be a couple times a week. So let's say twice a week on average, okay? That's about 100 tests a year. If we really wanted to do this the right way, every fighter who's in the program gets tested 100 times a year times 250 some odd fighters, that's 25,000 tests a year. 25,000 tests a year that would be necessary. 25,000 tests a year to test every fighter in CBP a couple times a week, which would be a true deterrent to keep guys from stacking. There's still some things they could do, right? Like I talked about, but to be stacking, cycling on and off, you really can't do that if you're being tested twice a week, particularly if you know one of those is probably gonna be a blood test. That's pretty hard to do, right? Two tests a week, that's about 100 tests a year per fighter, about 250 fighters, 25,000 tests a year. Now, if each test cost about $1,000, and again, I'm rounding low, rounding very, very low, guys, the budget required would be $25 million a year. 25 million. Right now, it's about 120,000. Even if we wanted to cut that number in half, and say each fighter gets tested once a week, about 50 tests a year, 250 some odd fighters, that's about 13,000 tests a year performed in CBP under this mythical scenario, right? Hypothetical scenario. 13,000 a year times about 1,000 a test, that's 13 million, okay? So even to test every fighter once a week under CBP, we are currently funded at less than 1% of the budget necessary to just do that. And even that wouldn't be true Olympic style. Olympic style drug testing is several times a week, blood, urine, everything. So that's, I wanted to just put some numbers on this. I'm trying to make sure I'm not leaving anything out here, guys. Um, I mentioned the, the CIR test being more expensive, urine test being cheaper. Okay, so that's just putting things in perspective, okay? And again, I like the WBC clean boxing program. And I think VADA is the best testing agency we have in all of sports, particularly, especially all of fight sports, all of martial arts. I think they do wonderful work, but they can only work with the budget they're provided. They are not for profit like USADA is. USADA tries to make it look like they're a government agency. They are a private company that is in it for profit and they do very well through their deal with the UFC, which is a complete joke in my opinion. Although every now and then somebody will test positive in that program. But VADA, we just found out today, Jarrett Hurd, 
and Julian J-Rock Williams, uh, Jared Swift Heard, are doing a rematch in December, right? Uh, I think it's at Barclays in Brooklyn. Probably going to be PBC on Fox. And as part of the uh, deal for this fight, uh, Julian J. Rock Williams once again wanted full VADA testing. And Jarrett Swift Heard agreed to it once again because they're both clean fighters. They're both true professionals. And they're going to pay for this themselves. You guys should know based on the numbers that I gave you. Now, sample collection for them will be much cheaper because they're both in the United States and getting it off to the lab in Utah won't cost as much. But they are both going to spend tens of thousands of dollars themselves, their own money, paying for true, what I would call Olympic style drug testing, not year round, but for 90 plus days. I think, the, the, I think they're gonna start testing in early September. So it will be 90 plus days before their fight up until uh, just after the fight itself. Uh, they're gonna spend tens of thousands of dollars each. So they're essentially each paying for a couple of months worth of budget for the clean boxing program. And that's that what they're going to pay for over 90 days is supposed to cover hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of fighters around the world. Right. So I want you guys to put this into perspective. And the next time you hear a promoter say, oh, my fighters enrolled in VADA testing and they're talking about CBP, they're not being honest with you. The next time you hear a fighter themselves or a manager or an advisor or a member of the credentialed boxing press use rhetoric like that make sure you look into what they're saying because being enrolled in cbp is not being enrolled in vada testing it is two very different things and if anything i hope that some of the numbers i just provided here to show you the scope and the difference and the cost associated with these tests just helps helps uh, relay that to you guys to where you understand that these are two very different things um, again, I like the WBC CBP. Great idea. It's a step in the right direction. I don't expect the WBC to pony up $13 million a year. That would be crazy. However, perhaps the program could be altered and perhaps uh, only those rated in the top five or those with titles should be in the program. And that $10,000 a month can be allocated to guys who hold WBC titles and they're tested year round, something like that. Uh, for the record, I like the WBC's seven day and 30 day uh, weigh-in, pre-fight weigh-in. I think that that's a smart thing to do. And in fact, I think they should do it year round. I think if you hold a title at 175 pounds, you should be within 10% of that weight range, or maybe it's 15%. I don't know what the number is. You know, they could decide that, but you should have to be within a certain weight range of that weight class where you hold that title year round, whether you're training for a fight or you're out of competition. If you hold a title at middleweight and you have, maybe you have to weigh 180 pounds or less, maybe it's 20 pounds. That's the grace that you're given, 20 pounds or something like that. Uh, you know, something like that. I think that that would be a very, very good program. That would be free. And that's something where fighters could weigh in, take photo evidence of what they weigh and send it to the WBC once a month. That would ensure guys are staying on weight and you wouldn't have these crazy weight fluctuations because ultimately it's draining weight that is killing fighters. When we see fighter deaths, a lot of it is related to dehydration. When you dehydrate your body, you're also dehydrating your brain. And when you go in a ring and take a sustained beating on an already dehydrated brain, that can cause brain bleeds, which causes death. Uh, so I wish more sanctioning organizations would step up and do this. I wish the Association of Boxing Commissions, the ABC, would create some unified rules around year-round drug testing and year-round weight checks, and especially weight checks leading up into a fight. I like the IBF's rehydration rule. I think all these things would go a very long way to improving fighter safety. We could talk about different glove size and headgear and all this. Guys, the science is out. None of that's really going to make a difference. You got to stop guys from wanting to cheat and from trying to game the system on the scale. A lot of the performance enhancing drugs fighters use these days are not to bulk up and put on muscle. That's more a thing of the 90s. What they're doing it for now is to cut weight and to have energy, to get in the camp already half shredded and have extra energy and recovery as they train. 
that's where a lot of the cheating is happening here. And it's more prevalent than people realize. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. Sorry for some of the rambling, but hopefully, um, you know, you got some information here that you can use. The next time you see somebody try to conflate these two programs and, and purposely try to mislead people, whether they're purposely trying to do it or accidentally doing it, send them the link to this video and say, here it is, all explained. Here it is for you in raw numbers. All right, guys, I'll see you at the fights.